All right, everyone. Um, welcome to the session on uh, functional and homomorphic cryptography. And um, let's just start right in. So our first talk is on uh, multi-key homomorphic authenticators. It's by Dario, Ekaterini, Luca, and Elena from Imdea and Chalmers. And uh, Luca will give the talk. OK, thank you for the introduction. As Sarah said, this is a joint work with Dario Fiore from Imdea and Ekaterini and uh, Elena from Chalmers University. So first of all, let me describe the problem of homomorphic authentication. What we have is that we have a user, Alice, who has some messages, and then we have the cloud. Alice wants to outsource the messages to the cloud, and then later on there is another guy, Bob, who wants to compute a function over the messages that Alice is used to store to the cloud. And then basically the cloud is answering back with the result of the computation, and Bob wants a way to be sure that the message was computed correctly. So the solution is we give Alice a secret key such that she can authenticate uh, the messages so that the messages and the authenticators are stored into the cloud. And then we provide the cloud uh, with a magic machine that uses an evaluation key to produce uh, an authenticator of the output of the function started from a bunch of authenticators which are provided by Alice. So this authenticator of the output can be then attached uh, to the output itself, and then Bob has a verification key with which he can uh, verify the, the computation and either accept or reject. So as you can see, we can have two kinds of homomorphic authenticators, the ones which have uh, public verification, and in this case we, we talk about homomorphic signatures that were introduced and formalized by Bonnet and Freeman in 2011, and in the case of secret verification we, we, speak, ab we speak of uh, homomorphic max, which were introduced by Gennaro and Wicks in AsiaCrypt 2013. So, from now on, I will be maybe mess up the terms uh, authenticator and signatures, but since the only difference between uh, signatures and max is the fact that the verification is either private or public, uh, it's not a big error. So, if we want to be a bit more formal, we can think of an homomorphic authenticator as a bunch of, of um, polynomial time algorithms. The first one is the key generation, which takes a security parameter and outputs a triple of keys a secret key, uh, an evaluation key, and a verification key. Then we have an authenticator algorithm which takes the secret key, a message identify, identifier i, and a message, and outputs uh, an authenticator for the message. We have an evaluation procedure, which is the magic machine that we saw before in the picture, that takes the, the evaluation key, the description of a function, of a bunch of authenticators, and output an authenticator for the output of the function over previously authenticated data. And then in the end, we have a verification procedure, which takes a verification key, the function, a message and a signature which wants to authenticate the message as the output of the function, and either accept or reject. So, which are the properties that we want for such a cryptographic tool? First, we want correctness. And what do we mean with correctness? We mean that basically, if we have authenticators which have been computed um, honestly, if we feed the evaluation procedure which that authenticators, then the output of the evaluation procedure has to pass the verification. Moreover, we want security. So basically, intuitively, we can say that without the secret key, an adversary cannot produce a valid authenticator for false results of, this, uh, of the function. And last but not least, we want succinctness. What do we mean with succinctness? We want that the size of an authenticator is logarithmic in the size of the data set. So what's the problem? Because this is a cryptographic tool which is widely used and studied. There are many constructions, but we have a problem. The problem? consists in the fact that the evaluation procedure so far deals with authenticators which have been authenticated just with a single key. And the question we ask ourselves and we started answering in this paper is how can we authenticate a computation which takes input from multiple users? So let me describe the situation pictorially since I think it's more easy to understand. We have a bunch of uh, clients. Each of them have his own uh, messages, and then we have the cloud. 
all the clients want to store the data into the cloud, and then, as before, later on there is Bob, who, who wants to compute a function over inputs which comes from the different users. And again, the cloud has to provide uh, the output of the computation, and Bob uh, wants to be sure that the output is, uh, is correct. So, the first solution that can, can we can think about could be like give the same secret key to all the users such that they can authenticate the messages with that secret key and store all the authenticators in the cloud. So basically we have a, a, magic, uh, a magic machine which performs the evaluation procedure, samples the signature which are of the messages one, two and three from the first, the second and the third uh, user respectively, outputs a, uh, an authenticators of the result, send the authenticators to Bob and Bob with the verification key, either accept or reject. So basically here, nothing is changing with respect to the single user uh, framework. Which is the problem? The problems are mainly two. The first problem is that from Bob's point of view, the three users are basically the same users. He cannot distinguish. And this is either, uh, is it, uh, this is, uh, practical and philosophical uh, concern that Bob can have since he cannot distinguish and since moreover, if one of the users is corrupted, then the whole system is compromised. So which is the solution we thought? Basically, the intuition is we are gonna give each user his own uh, secret key such that each of them can uh, uh, authenticate the, the, his messages with the proper color and then when Bob wants to compute the function, uh, the cloud is able to give the result of the computation to Bob, and then there is a special procedure which now takes uh, another key which has the three colors, one, one for, from each user, and can basically combine uh, authenticators from different users in order to get um, an authenticator for the, the computation computed over uh, inputs from different users, such, such that Bob, with a multicolor verification key, can either accept or reject uh, um, the result. So basically here, what happens if someone is corrupted? Let's assume that the, the, last, uh, the last client is corrupted. What happens is that basically we can still compute F over inputs which are provided by not corrupted users. And so all the process is running again and Bob, with uh, the same verification key, can either accept or reject the, the result. So, let me summarize our contribution, which is basically an outline of the talk. First, we provide the first suitable definition of multi-key homomorphic authenticators. Second, we provide the first construction of multi-key homomorphic signatures, which are publicly verifiable, and these two points will be like the core of the talk. And finally, we provide the first construction of multi-key homomorphic message authentication code, which I will not have time to cover in this talk. So first of all, let's analyze the primitive. What do we do? We, we can deal with computations, which takes data from different users. And how do we intuitively uh, solve this problem? Basically, if we consider the circuit which describe the function that we want to compute, we are gonna divide the different inputs, assign me, assigning them to the different clients. And how do we do that? Basically, we take each wire of the circuit and we put a special label which, have, which has two sub-labels. The first one, which identifies the client who has to put the output. And the second one, which uh, identifies the message which is gonna be put into the circuits. So basically, I want to stress this point, each label now identifies both an identity, which is a user, and a messenger. So how can we more formally describe the primitive? Basically, we have a setup phase that on a security parameter outputs some public parameter. We have a key generation algorithm which takes the public parameter and outputs um, a key triple, a secret key, an evaluation key, and a verification key. Here you can notice that the keys are white and not colored like before. That's because the key generation procedure, and that's one of the key points of our construction, is can be run independently by, by the users. So basically, each, users can, each, each user can generate his own keys and use to, 
to sign and to evaluate stuff. Then we have an authentication procedure which takes uh, um, a secret key, a label and a message and outputs an authenticator and evaluation that now takes the description of a function, a bunch of authenticators and evaluation key which depends on the users which are involved in the computation of F and outputs um, uh, and authenticators which, which certify that uh, the output of the function is correct. Then we have a verification uh, procedure which takes the function and a bunch of labels along with a bunch of verification keys from the different users involved in the computation, a message and a signature, and accept or reject uh, the message checking the, the validity of the signatures. So, again, which are the properties that we want to achieve? First, we want authentication and evaluation correctness. Similar, similarly to what I told you before, we want that any input of the authentication algorithm and any input of evaluation algorithm over uh, fairly computed authenticators pass the verification. And then we have succinctness again. But here, we define succinctness as uh, the requirement for which the size of the authenticator has to be logarithmic in the size of the data set and linear in the identity space. So basically what we want to say is that um, a signature is succinct if it's logarithmic in the data set size and linearly in the number of identities which are involved in the computation. It could sound like a weird requirement, but basically if we consider computations where we have a few users with many inputs, that uh, that succinct succinctness uh, definition sounds pretty good. So why I'm stressing that much on succinctness? Because without succinctness requirement, building this kind of homomorphic authenticators becomes trivial. And now can we do it? Imagine the cloud that has uh, a bunch of messages and authenticators from different users, and imagine Bob that wants to compute always the same function uh, over messages from different users. What the cloud can do is basically parse the message and uh, with the respective authenticators that Bob wants to use for performing the computation, send everything to Bob. Bob can separately check using the different verification keys if the messages and the signatures uh, pass the verification uh, procedure and then compute the function on its own. So what is left? is modeling security. And to modeling security, we assume that the cloud is malicious now. And again, the framework is the same as before. So he has access to this magic machine, which can evaluate um, uh, signatures from different signatures from different client. And what it can do is that it can make queries to the different users obtaining uh, authenticators on them. Then it can repeat, of course, this multiple times and um, the cloud will be in the situation where it will have a bunch of messages with uh, a bunch of authenticators and then can choose a function and can choose some messages and claim that uh, he computed a function over previously authenticated inputs. Intuitively, what we want to achieve is that if the malicious cloud cheats, that is, it provides a false result of the function over previously authenticated data, then the signature that he, he provides to Bob is not going to pass the verification. So now, what happens if one of the users is corrupted? Uh, we model this uh, eventuality saying that the cloud gets the secret key of the corrupted user. And basically what we want is that again, if the cloud chooses the function and now chooses messages which belongs to not corrupted users, that, that's really important, then it cannot cheat. Where cheat is make a false result authenticated. So now we can ask ourselves, why do we need not to allow a corrupted user to put inputs in the computation? So why don't we consider a forgery the fact that uh, um, the cloud can compute false results over data that comes from, uh, from uh, corrupted users? Well, because if the choice of the function is up to the cloud, basically the cloud is able to make Bob accept uh, results that are wrong. And we can realize this with 
a simple example, let's take the easiest let's take the easiest function that uh, we can imagine, like a gate operation, and let's imagine that one of the two inputs is provided by the green user which is corrupted. Basically, the cloud is able to authenticate whatever result of the, of the function it wants. So, let's move on to the first construction of the multi-key homomorphic signature that we propose. And just to ease the presentation, I will consider the simple case of two users. So, in our scheme, the public parameters are a message space X, which is Boolean, um, a matrix space, which is Z n times M, another matrix space that is U, where basically U are squared matrices over Z, where the, um, the infinite norm is less or equal than beta. We have a data set of size T and the identity, which are basically two, since we, we are like... Uh, speaking on a toy of a toy example. The key generation consists in providing a lattice trapdoor, which will be the secret key, an evaluation key, which is a matrix uh, taken at random at in uh, Zn times m, and a verification key, which is the same A as the evaluation key, along with uh, T elements of uh, the distribution V, where basically the intuitive idea is that we have a VI for each element of the data set. For what regards authentication, basically we take uh, a message X and uh, a label L, which again is made of two sub-labels, and we output um, a user-related matrix, uh, matrix uh, U in the distribution U, such that it satisfies the, the equation AID UID plus XG equals V, where G is a known matrix of coefficient uh, 0 and 1. So basically, where do we use the trapdoor? We use the trapdoor to invert v tau minus xg and find u with small coefficients such that the equation is satisfied. What, what about evaluation? Here we have to split the two cases. The first case is the two authenticators in input, the two signatures in input, are uh, from the same user. And here, basically, it's pretty simple. We apply the evaluation procedure of a paper from Gorbin, Vaikuntanathan and Weeks uh, from 2015, and we solve the problem in this way. And for the verification, what we check is that since the two uh, labels share the same identity, green ID, we check that A green ID plus uh, the green authenticators over F plus XG is equal to a non procedure over, uh, to a non evaluation procedure over Vita1 and Vita2 that I'm not going to explain and we check if this check is okay. If we have a case where the two signatures in input are from different users, we have first to expand the signatures, putting a zero like a, a fake component over the identity that we don't have. So basically, if we are in the case of the green identity, we have to put a purple zero like the second component, while if we are in the case of purple identity, we have to add a, zero compo a, zero, a green zero component as a first component. And then we are going to reasoning component-wise, applying again component-wise the evaluation procedure from uh, uh, GVW15. For what regards verification, here, uh, since we have two signatures which do not share the identity, we have two labels that do not share the identity as well. And so what we have to do is basically to sum uh, A green ID times uh, uh, green signature plus A purple ID times purple signature and check that this plus X times G is equal to the evaluation procedure over the Vita Y. So for what regards security, what we got is that if small integer solution problem is hard, then our multi-key homomorphic signature scheme is weakly adaptive secure. I'm not going to read again the small integer solution since we heard a lot of times in the past days. And then from this basic result of weak adaptive secure, uh, we have some extension. So basically from, s from SIS, we go directly to weak adaptive secure for single data set. Going in a random oracle model, we have a variant for unbounded tag space. Using a standard signature from the weak adaptive for single data set, we can go to the multiple data set frameworks. 
and then using the isomorphic trumptor function which were proposed in, again in GVW15, we go from um, multiple data set um, in the weak adaptive setting uh, to the um, adaptive secure uh, framework. So let me recap a bit uh, about our contribution. We proposed the first suitable definition of multi-key homomorphic authenticators and then the poor construction of a multi-key homomorphic signatures and MAC. Let me mention some recent work. Basically, there are two papers. The first one is a zoo of homomorphic signatures, which is from Lai et al. and can be found in ePrint. And then the, st the strong points of this paper are that they, they propose a stronger security notion and they go beyond the linear dependence on the number of identities, but the cost is um, very strong assumptions. And the other paper, which is related to ours, is a paper from Derler and Zlamanig, also in ePrint, which is entitled Key Homomorphic Signatures and Application, which deals with homomorphisms in the, on the key space. We have some open problems that we want to underline. The first problem is go beyond the linear dependence on the number of identity with weaker assumptions. And the second one is consider the fact of uh, users colluding with the malicious cloud, not for general function because we saw that we cannot achieve this point, but with uh, particular classes of functions. That's the end of the, the talk. Thank you for your attention. Okay, um, we've got some time for questions. I'll start with a question of my own. Um, so could you maybe give a, a sort of practical example? Yeah, of so basically, okay. Um, let's assume, I have to, okay. Let's assume that the users are sensors that, uh, wait, okay. Okay, let's assume that the users are sensors that has to send some data to a remote cloud and the cloud has, has to, to compute some function over them and assume that at some point one of the sensors is basically compromised or get broken or whatever. Basically, we do not have to restore the whole, uh, the whole uh, system, but we just have to, re to replace the sensor and give the new sensor a new triple of keys and the system is going to work uh, anyway. Uh, can you make it fully? I mean, the, do you have some kind of bootstrapping procedure for this? Yeah, our, mm, our, construction, our construction works with leveled fully homomorphic encryption. We did not think about uh, what you are mentioning, but I mean, basically, we consider it a first step. So it's the first proposal of a definition, it's the first proposal of construction, but the hope is that in the future there will be much more construction, which deals with uh, much more models than what we do. Any other questions? Let me ask one more, actually. Can you pull up the, the algorithms? Yeah. Yeah, so if I'm, for example, like if I'm always collecting data from the same set of sensors, yeah. is there a way to combine the keys, like the evaluation yeah, keys, that, that, that's, into a that's single one? You know, that's one of the open questions. It's go beyond the linear dependence on the number of keys. Because so far, what we have is that, for example, if you group the sensor by district, for example, and you consider districts which, or sensor which send multiple messages, then the, the, succinctness, uh, the succinctness definition works because you have multiple messages which are authenticated with the same key. But the how to combine different keys in order to make the number of keys shorter, it's not really clear in, at the moment. Okay. I think it, it's gonna be a, a future direction of work. All right, well, unless there are other questions, uh, let's thank Luca again. Yeah, for the laptop. It's there already.